Hello YouTube, welcome back to the layout. We're doing something a little different today. We're looking at a structure. Uh, what I'm planning on putting together in the layout is a modern day freight house. So hopefully those of you guys that are modeling a, a more contemporary era, or actually this freight house is probably at least 50 or 60 years old, maybe even older. So even if you're going backwards in time a little bit, uh, this is going to be Freight House 8. Freight House 8 is in Berwyn, Illinois, which is just outside the city of Chicago. Uh, it's part of the Clyde Yard. The Clyde Yard extends from pretty much the Chicago city limits to uh, partially through Berwyn, Illinois. Uh, geographically, where I have the freight house and the layout isn't isn't proper, but uh, it's on a peninsula here. I'll show you in a little bit that uh, it's kind of where I can fit it and make a nice model of it. So what I'm using is what you see here. It's a Pike Stuff kit. This is the shops. If you're not familiar with Pike Stuff, you can Google them or check them out on eBay or Amazon if you want to buy one. They're... They're great kits. Um, they give you a lot of extra parts. They're very customizable. Uh, if I pan here to the right a little bit, they even give you a couple of ideas of some other things you can do with the structure. Instead of doing a three bay shop like you have here, they got a couple of examples of a lumber yard and a distribution center and engine house, etc. So uh, very, very good kit. Um, they give you a ton of extra parts and uh, you, know, you can do really whatever you want with them. The other cool thing about them is they give you you know, in doing that, they give you cut lines where you can model your own doors and windows. You can omit them or you can cut them out or cut your own out. And there's cut lines here to size up the height of the uh, building so you can, again, do different things, uh, you know, to it. So this is my very short representation of the Clyde Yard. Uh, really doesn't do it any justice. Uh, this particular section is 16 by, by 2. Uh, that includes the leaves at the end there. Uh, the Clyde Yard, if you've ever been there or you've seen it, it's about 52 tracks, I think, at its widest point. So I think it goes a couple of miles long. So it doesn't give it a whole lot of justice. Uh, like I said, this peninsula here is is really um, geographically not correct for where the freight house is at. But, you know, it's a space that I have and I'm able to make a good uh, model out of it. So um, just like a starting project, get your measurements. So you can see here where I've... I've laid out the building, if you see the pencil line there and the bench work. Uh, you probably can't see it too well because I've already got the cork laid, but I you know, drew in where my track lines are or where they need to be, you know, in uh, injunction with where the openings of the building are at. Uh, as you can see, I've laid the cork, put the track inside of my feeders, don't need to bore you with all that stuff, but I got all that stuff done. Added a couple of re-railers in there just for good measure. You know, as far as the structure itself, it comes in, in different pieces like I showed you a moment ago with, with this guy here. And it gives you an abundance of pieces to use to join them together. I happen to use these pieces here. Uh, they give you some instructions on what you could use, but again, you can really do whatever you want. Uh, I've cut out the doors, as you can see there. And one thing I did is I've omitted this small building here, and I've taken these... Uh, sidewalls since uh, you know they weren't the size they were the full length size and I've made the structure longer uh, from what it originally was and this is great because it gives a little better or bigger representation of the building as well as uh, I can now put two standard 50 foot freight cars in here or whatever you know whatever I want and the freight car the second freight car will stick out a little bit and I'll show you that here in a moment uh, but at least the doorway to the freight cars inside the building I can now service uh, two cars at once. Now like I said you can you can do this with one track, two track, or three track in this particular building. Uh, I did mine as three because the prototype has three tracks in there uh, so I wanted to at least give it some sort of uh, representation of the prototype as well as uh, you know just having one more track to, to move freight in and out of during an op session. The roof section is modular just like the rest of the kit. I have a little bit of a, a, a center beam in there just to give the kit some uh, rigidity because it is a little bit uh, light or flimsy in its current state. Um, I'm going to give it some paint and you know put some of the larger pieces together. I have one more unit coming in here in a little bit. That's going to be the truck side terminal list and I'll show you guys that as soon as it comes in a little bit later in the video.
Okay, the next piece is coming in the mail. This one's a uh, Pike Stuff truck terminal, as you can see. Uh, essentially, all this building is is a miniature representation of what a modern freight terminal could be. As you can see, you got truck doors on one side or trailer doors on one side, and you got box car access on the back. And really, the kit's really the same on the front and the back, uh, with a few minor tweaks to uh, to take in consideration. If you want to have an overhang, you want to have it flush, depending on what you want to service where. Uh, and really all we're going to do is is use half of this. And you can see there we have our original building we worked on earlier in the video. It's got some paint, it's got some glue that's drying. Uh, that's what the tape's there for. Uh, and I put together the first couple of pieces here. I had to uh, mill down and sand off part of the gutter here in the top um, just so the roof could, the, uh, could uh, come over and be positioned as an overhang and it'll look something kind of like this and what you'll have is boxcar servicing here cars getting loaded unloaded here and put this guy right here so you can see it and the opposite end of it trucks getting loaded unloaded here on this side now keep in mind that I have not built the foundation for the first building yet, so it'll actually sit a little higher once I get that foundation built. And this second part of the building that we're starting to put together now will sit underneath that roof line just a little bit, and I think it'll have a nice pleasing effect. We're at the point where we have a semi-finished or semi-completed project. You can see I've got the two buildings up. You know, the paint sign, I've got some of the detail up. Uh, certainly have a lot more we can do with this with weathering and lighting and interior detail as well as just getting this running scene up in order. You can see I have just some uh, poster board here just to kind of represent you know, the asphalt. Uh, really as far as I'm going to go with this video, I have a lot more of these I need to do. Uh, my layout is pretty barren, plywood. Uh, I need to settle in or, or finalize where I want to get the last couple of pieces of track in a few different areas then just so I can have that track fit the structure that's going to go there and service the industry. Um, so again, just want to give you guys an idea that I had, something maybe you can do on your layout, not exactly a how-to, but again, just to give you guys an idea and I hope you guys enjoyed it and you know, stay tuned for more videos.